I am delighted to be here at uh, Studio 21 this morning with um, a friend, John Ricciuti. And I'm here today because John, in recent uh, years, you've had the opportunity to participate in a brand new program called Behind the Lens at Villanova University. That's and that's what I would like to talk to you about. Sure. So first of all, could you tell me what the idea behind the lens is as a course? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Behind the lens is a, uh, uh, a course study for non-traditional students who are enrolled in the Villanova United Scholars program, which is in the College of Professional Studies which is separate from, it's separate, but it's a part of the university. And uh, the, the students in the program, it's a two-year residency certificate program. And in it, they take course study just like, like the student body takes. And uh, one of the courses that's offered to them is, is a, is a, uh, a hands-on filmmaking class because hands-on is very important to the students. And one of the things that we do is uh, I get them to make pictures, make films. And this year, last year, I started to, I used all, all kinds of cam old cameras. And, and I saw that they were just so, their age group is so accustomed to using an iPhone that I thought this year I would stick to that. And we would just make a, a film based on using an iPhone because films are being made with iPhones. Mm -hmm. So I thought this would be a great idea. And, this, and I have eight students of the, of, I think there are 15 students in, in, in the cohorts of the, of the program. And I have eight of them, uh, four of whom from, from last year and four new ones this year. And uh, we we're, last year we produced a film, a 30 minute film that we, sh we uh, showed at the Conley Center at the university. And this year we're in the process of uh, producing uh, more films, but more under the guidelines, strict guidelines. Uh, the Villanova University has its own uh, film festival. And last year I got into it late with their production. But this year, uh, I may, I'm making sure that we get into it on time because I know how film festivals are. They're very strict with a lot of their guidelines for entry. So I think I probably told you more than you wanted to know. Well, that's, about... that's okay. That's okay. No, because it gives me uh, reasons to ask you certain questions. Sure. Now, now you mentioned the word non-traditional students. Uh, when I was in college many years ago, uh, there, was, there were only academic students who would go to a four-year university and get their degrees. There might be two-year programs, but I never heard the term non-traditional students. So could you define that for the audience a little bit more? Sure. Uh, I, I personally struggle with intellectually challenged. Uh, um, I think the... The kindest thing that I can think of is because of having worked in this program for three years now is the term on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So when I hear that term, I find that more palatable because the, I found having worked with them, I get to see the world through their eyes. It's not what I see. It's what they see. And it's what I try to impart on them when I say to them, well, tell me what you see. I know what I see. You tell me what you see. And they see things in a different way. And that, in my mind, is a spectrum. Well, any filmmaker has their own idea. And, and, and the, the term non-traditional students, to me, it sounds a little condescending or uh, intellectually challenged or um, there's other terms that have been applied um, uh, to them, and I uh, the, the, let me point out to you also, they do take academic studies. Mm -hmm. Mine is not an academic study in that I don't pro, I don't have homework. Mm -hmm. I don't have a test. The test is the is the team that we put together as a team to make a film. That's the final exam for me. 
but they do. The, everything else they take, whether it's religion or history, um, uh, independent living, that's that, that's ac- that's academic study. Well, when I uh, I had a you thought. you weren't a, a professional. You're oh, a teacher. Oh, absolutely. You're a teacher's teacher. I should be asking you that question. <laughs> absolutely. And you're a PhD. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, one of the things that. Uh, uh, I know early on when I started out my own teaching career many, many years ago was that I had a philosophy that the students in front of me, everyone was unique and different. And even though I had an English curriculum to teach, my job was to try to get them interested and to help them learn whatever they were capable of learning. And that's where we have the differences between in traditional schools, A's, B's, C's. Some got more than others, but there was never any doubt in my mind that they were all capable of learning something. And it was my job to address where they were and to help them move forward in their learning. So from that point of view, I'm very excited to hear about this program because in the the past, a lot of uh, people would have written these kids off. And and now you've found in Villanova has helped to find uh, something that will interest them and will perhaps contribute to their uh, future stability. So when I talk about their future stability, What is the goal of this program? Well, to be quite frank, the goal was to, when I was introduced to the program by the person who was one of the originators of it, his belief was he wanted to uh, help kids be something more than moving shopping carts around uh, a a parking lot for for a shopping area. Those Those were his words. So that's what drove him to do something greater for kids. And the, the object is that they, they can get into something other than that. Uh, the university program provides internships for students. We have one student run now who's here with us now, Zach, who is uh, working with Kevin from Radnor Studio 21 uh, in filming this project, what we're doing right now, this 30 minute interview. Um, one student is, that, that I had as a, as a intern last year is now working in a hardware store. Uh, he's capable of doing that. Um, so the object is to gi- give them self-esteem, give them confidence in themselves, give them a, a, a reason to believe that they're capable of doing something. I do in my, uh, from my conversations with the students, they know who they are. They know that they're my word, different. Mm -hmm. So what they're able to do is what we're able to provide is is a confidence building in them so that they're capable of it. You see, I always say, I say to the students, tell me what your ideas are of where where would we like to go? What would you like to, would you like to ride a trolley car in Philadelphia? Would you like to go to Lancaster? So my, my job is to ask them, what they would like to do, and it's my job to make it work. They give me the ideas, I'll I'll make it it work. That's my job, and that's what I believe the best thing I can do for them. And to open up areas for them that some of them have never ridden a trolley car. Some of them have never been to Lancaster and don't know what it's like out there. Right. Well, let me... The more that they see, the more that they're... The, 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 it opens up a different world for them. Yes, and I think that uh, I know in the case of many parents, uh, I used to participate in what they used to call IEP meetings, and I'd meet parents. And uh, parents of or of non traditional students, uh, they, as with all parents, very protective of their children, but at the same time, wanting them to. Uh, do as much as they were capable of. So to that idea of what they're capable of, could you give the audience a better idea of, on a, a weekly basis, beginning with the beginning of the semester, these students come to you and you meet them. And then 
what is your approach you were mentioning about asking them what they would like to do, which for them is very different, I'm sure, from what they've had in the past, because probably uh, they've always been led rather than initiate. So you're giving the them the opportunity to initiate uh, what it is they want to learn. So could you take us through some of the projects that you've done with them? Sure. To, to, uh, well, up to date, or I, I would have to include from last year as well. Sure, sure. Okay. Th this is the second year of the program, is it? That I've been involved in it, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, beyond the volunteer level. Mm -hmm. um, I provide them with a syllabus of what we're going to do we, from the first day, introducing ourselves to each other. Uh, this year, I divided up the class into, to include two team captains. So they would actually act as uh, assistants to me in teaching the kids that are the four new kids that are that weren't in the that weren't in our program last year behind the lens uh, about what where we are to bring them up to speed, and that that's worked out well. Um, what I do is uh, take them to, like for example, to the Radnor F Fire Department. I seek out the chief. I make all these preparations on my own in advance. And, and I have one of them introduce the, interview the fire chief. Um, we provide them with um, uh, uh, internships. I encourage them to get an interview with the person that they're doing, working with in their, in their internship. One, is, one is, is an intern in a hardware store. One's an intern at Orvis in Haverford, uh, and that's a suburb of uh, Delaware, a suburb of Philadelphia, Haverford, which is where the source, I'm just doing that for the sake of the audience. Um, so I encourage them to interview those uh, people that they're in and around. Uh, we interviewed the Lower Marion police chief, uh, the retired one. We haven't interviewed the new, the new one. And what this does, is, is gives them an opportunity to have eye-to-eye -eye contact with a person of, of superiority, a certainly a high police chief of, of, of a township, and gives them a sense of being able to talk to that a person at that level. And I don't, I don't come up with the questions. It's unrehearsed and unscripted. So they, I say, you come up. Now, I've, I, I'll help them along. If they if they look at me for 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 like well what should I ask next I'll, I'll say well ask them this or ask them that so we I do that on a weekly basis what the ultimate goal is for them the pressure becomes we have to put this content together and the theme is you never have enough pictures I take them to Chanticleer I take them to the Wayne the Chanticleer is a like a a, con a conservancy in the in the Radnor area, mm -hmm. and I tell them go out and, and and take pictures. And if you see somebody that works there, ask them questions about. Approach them. You know, I always tell them if you you, you don't ask, if you don't you don't know if you don't ask. So that, so there's that part. And every week we start to build to a crescendo of having a film or a group of films. Last year we made one film. It was it was called. Uh, a, a film, it was, the t title of the film was uh, By Us, About Us. And it was something that they did through the course of the whole year, a collection. We went, uh, one student went to the um, um, uh, 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 Reading Terminal, interviewed some of, some of the uh, uh, people that worked there or owners of the facilities. And, you know, there's a microphone, asked questions, camera, the whole bit. And uh, eventually, we put all that together and made it a film, a 30-minute film that we showed, as I said earlier, at the Conley Center at Villanova University. And, and I, I believed in my heart that through their efforts, uh, they could have had that film in a film festival had I got it there soon enough. And that's on me. And I believe it was a winner. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this is not like a participation trophy winner. They're, this was through their efforts. And, they, and 
initially they 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 moved like any team. I don't care who they are, moved very slow, understanding each other, learning to believe in each other, learning to trust each other. And I recognized those things. But as the year progressed up into December, when we had the final product that we showed in January, they eventually they put together a film. Well, you know what impresses me about what you've just said is that, uh, number one, as I said before, you're respecting them from the get-go and you're asking them for direction in regard to what it is they'd like to do. But then you give them, over time, the increasing confidence to see that through pictures, through something concrete, uh, and in the case of so much academic learning, it's so abstract that non-traditional students like this have a difficult time with that kind of material. But what you're doing and Villanova is doing is to uh, uh, give them uh, concrete experiences and then show them the skills that they need to take pictures, to think about how these pictures are all connected, to ultimately make a documentary or a video. And these are lifelong skills that they take with them. And that's the whole purpose of any educational system. Sure, sure. So, so I'm, I'm very impressed to hear this. Uh, as you were talking, I was thinking about a recent um, uh, coffee uh, clutch that I had recently with a young man who many years ago, back in the late 90s, was a student of mine at, at Lower Marion High School. And he was a non-traditional student. And in that uh, highly competitive, highly academic culture, he had a very difficult time fitting in. And he had a very difficult time uh, in, in getting the teachers to understand who he was and the best way to deal with him. He is in his late 30s now. He lives in Florida. Uh, he's a stand-up comedian um, when he gets the opportunity. Uh, he has a job at Wawa during the day, but he has developed the confidence over time despite the difficulty in high school that he was experiencing. He, he has the confidence now and the, you know, uh, uh, to be with anybody and to talk to anybody. And he has a lot to say. And I think programs like what you're doing with the students at Villanova is wonderful for all those reasons, because these students are capable of attainment. And um, I want to hear more about who these kids are. Can you give me um, perhaps a snapshot into how they are at the beginning, how you see them, how they see themselves, and what happens throughout the year and where they end up at the, at the end of the first year with you? Well, <laughs> that's interesting that you ask me that. Um, initially, I would say things to them about how to do what you do in an interview. I may I, I, I spend a lot of time, whatever, if, if there's filmmaking involved, I like them to do as many interviews as they possibly can, eye to eye. That's very important for, for the students. And, and I used to think to myself, uh, they're not listening to what I'm saying. Uh, they're, they're not hearing it. I, I find myself repeating things over and over again. So this was around November last year, and I took one of the students to uh, a law firm to interview a lawyer on the main line who has a mock court in his, on his office where the attorneys practice. While we were driving on the way, I was scratching my nose. And um, I, I, he said, John, John don't, don't scratch your nose. The student said that to me. I said, okay. So I said, now here's what we're going to do. I sat up at the, at the table with the, with the attorney, and I said, and, and the, the, my intern was with Jill, who you know, Jill Freshy, my film partner. She, she was filming some of the, of, of the event. And uh, I started to talk to the attorney, the attorney, and he says to me, now, John, don't pick your nose in front of everyone. 
And I realized that he, he was paying attention to what I was. And, and then um, he would say, he said, now keep your hands on the table and make eye contact. So all the things that I had Sammy saying over and over again that I didn't think people were listening to, kids were listening to, um, th- he did. And I find that, th- that, that, that they all do that. They all listen to everything I say, every word I say. They may not, they may not repeat it to me, and it may not come out, but in some form or the other, it does. And uh, I, I see... The, the, the confidence that they exude because they're, they don't ask my approval. Mm-hmm. Can I take a picture of this? What do you, can I shoot this? No, they just do it and say, well, I took pictures at the parents' weekend or I took, I, I, I took pictures of the tailgate. You know, one of them told me that on the way over here this morning. So I, I see them evolving. I don't know if I said this to you, but I see a lot of myself. I think as a kid, I had learning disabilities. And I, I came from a generation where parents didn't readily recognize those things. But I see it in them. I see myself in them. And it, and it, and it, and it makes me endear myself more to them to want to see them succeed. Mm-hmm. Because I, I can see that all you, you, all they need is the confidence to believe in themselves, and, and they can continue to do what I think that, that that they're capable. They're all capable of doing it. There's an element of shyness to them, an element of innocence. Um, I'm not saying I had those things, <laughs> but uh, but they, they have that, and I think it's just a matter of. It, once, once they believe that I believe in them, they go forward. Right. That's right. how. I, that's how I see. Right. It. And one of the things too that um, uh, I think with so many people who are different from most others is that those other people may view uh, uh, folks like this and be judgmental. And it doesn't sound like there is any judgment on your part. You're very accepting. You're, um, but I do have a question. In the same way that one of the students was correcting you and told you not to scratch your nose, what do you do? What is your approach when they may do something inappropriate? How do you handle that? I asked them with a question. Why did you do that? Mm-hmm. Why, why are you why are you why are you doing that? Right. Um, uh, I don't really. I haven't had that anything that I've had to be real stern about. Uh, I I treat them like they're my friends, but only not too close, mm-hmm. because I, there still has to be you know an element of like who's in charge here. Mm-hmm. But uh, I I'm I'm very very. Uh, I, I, I'm very caring about them. Right. I, I, you know, uh, I, I treat, you know, before in my, in my previous life, uh, I worked for SEPTA and I, and I rose through the ranks over the course of years and I was in charge of a lot of people. And I, I, the only way I can say it is I treat them like union bus drivers. You know, mm-hmm. I, I don't act like I'm the boss. They, I, they feel comfortable talking to me. They ask me questions about my personal life. I tell them I, I've, I've, I've had them to my house. And my, my wife, Joan, has been very, very generous with them. This, my, my students, not, mm-hmm. not them all, just right. mine, my guys and, and girls, two girls and six guys. And, uh, and, and that's a unique experience because last year I only had eight guys. This year I have. So, and, and I, I, I act like I'm their friend. I don't try to act like I'm their father, mm-hmm. their boss, or this or that. I'm, you know, I'm John. Right. You, right. Know, you don't have to call me professor. Uh, I, I feel kind of awkward about that, being called that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just John. I'm just, you know, John. And, and, and th- them knowing that, one of, them, one of them said to me last summer, if I got in trouble, would you would would you would you come and get me? And I said, absolutely. I said, you call me first if you get in trouble. And I don't know what kind of trouble. I don't know. Uh, 
I found over the summer that they send me pictures of what they had for jobs. So they, they didn't just drop out. Um, I, I try to have that kind of, re I rely on my personality to work best with them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't promise them anything. I just say, we're going to do something really cool. We're going to have a fun time. This is really going to be neat. And all you have to do is use your camera to phone and go out right. and well, we'll the, make something. Well, I don't know if I answered all your questions. You, you did. Know. You did. Uh, and the reason I asked you that question is because uh, just recently I was reading an article that had to do with how, what is the best way to interact with people who have Alzheimer's? And very often uh, their sons or daughters correct them. If they say something like, let's say a spouse has died and the person with Alzheimer's might say, oh, where, where, where is Tom? Uh, you know, I've been waiting for him. And rather than say, oh, mom, you know, dad died last year and upset that person. Uh, the most current thought about dealing with something like that is to acknowledge what that person has said and then to move on. You don't upset the person. Right. Uh, and they don't know that it's um, it's not reality. Uh, so that's why I asked you about dealing with these students and what makes you successful. Now, the last thing before we end our conversation this morning is that... Um, Wait, the time's up. Already. I, I could do this for a while. Uh, because oh, I was going to ask you about yourself. Oh, that's all right. Uh, how are these students evaluated? Well, from my perspective, or for, uh, the other professors that they work with uh, rely on test scores, uh, uh, work assignments that they've been given, and I and and we we they they get help with that. Uh, ours is a simple. We ours is our goal is to accomplish a film that I can turn over to the director of the program, Molly Sean, and say, here's what these guys have produced this year. And to date, they're, they're uh, uh, past where we were last year already. They've, they just keep, because I one of my themes is you never have enough film. You never just keep shooting stuff. Anything, take out your phone, and and if I'm with, if I'm around them, I'll nudge them. Yo, you, what are you doing? You're, where's your camera? Where's your phone? Oh, he'll be over there talking. Do something. Mm -hmm. So uh, that kind of nudging, poking, if you will, is is uh, is what I do with them. And and uh, I quite frankly, I wish they had the program for three years, because I uh, I think that they're. Uh, they're capable of, of producing anything. All they have to do is just believe in themselves, and and and, and they're capable of, of, of doing anything. Right. Well, uh, the fact of the matter is, learning throughout one's life, it's developmental, and it what we learn very often. Uh, it, it's most often connected to what we already learn because uh, th there's a theory of learning that says. Uh, and, and I tell my students about it when I'm dealing with writing improvement. You still have students? I still have students. I tutor in writing and reading. And what I always tell them, because they're most, very often the young ones especially, and I teach as young as uh, fourth grade, but I go up through uh, seniors and helping them get their college essays together. Um, one of the things I tell them is writing takes time. And so what you need to do to come out with a good piece of writing is write a little bit and then come back to it, write a little bit more, because the act of the writing itself over time will give you a viewpoint that you didn't have when you first started. And it sounds like your picture taking with the kids and telling them always be taking the pictures. Eventually, I think if they begin to see this picture at the beginning and this picture at the end and all those in between, they might see something that they had no thoughts of seeing when they first started. Sure. So it, it's very connected as I'm listening to you. It's part of what we call visual literacy. Now, unfortunately, I see that our time is running out. Oh. 
So, John, I want to thank you very much. Oh. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And I hope that those of you in the audience who have been listening now recognize of a couple of things that Villanova uh, and John in particular is doing a wonderful job with non-traditional students and giving them the opportunity to grow uh, as we want for any students. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.